Good morning. I hey, hope. John, how's it going? Uh, you know, let's, let's fire smoke. Uh, more, uh, more autumn joy. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, Matthias. Matthias, you there? Maybe you stepped away. Good morning. Oh, there you go. Hello. So many mute buttons. Yeah. All right. We actually have a very short agenda today. Hey, Timur. Hey, Doc. How are you? Good. How are you doing? All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very sure. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Oops. Hey, Clemens. Guten Tag. Oh, Frida's in. All right, let's see. Tommy, hello. Yo. Yo. And Nick? Hey, Doug. Hello. Oh, let's try to do this right. Uh, Grant, are you there? Oh, he has no mic yet. Never mind. Hey, Grant. Hey, Doc. This is Grant T, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. There's, there's another Grant out there. Just want to make sure. Yeah, Grant Rogers. And Manuel? Yes, hi. Hello. Oh. While we're waiting, just let you guys know, um, Jem did indicate to me that he thinks the protobuf one is ready to go. So if you're bored, you can take a look at that one in case you haven't looked at it recently. I'm always totally bored. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that's everybody's problem these days. Absolutely. <clears throat> hey, Colin. Hey, good morning. Morning. I was I was too busy shipping the cloud event schema registry interface. Yes, I, you're you're obviously excited by that one. Yes. yes. Hey, Brian. Hello. Hey, Ray. Hey, Lance. Hello. This is Ray. Yep. Hello. Hello. Okay, I was talking on mute. Hey, David. Yeah, I thought it was me. 
I've been having zoom problems convers- all morning where my audio is not working. Yeah. I had this whole conversation. No one could hear me. Uh, actually, we, uh, in IBM, we've been using WebEx and, uh, WebEx just does not like me you know, over the last week or so. It's had this wonderful little habit where it would disconnect my audio. Um, not, I'd still be in this conference. I could see people do stuff, but I could not hear them. But sometimes they could hear me. And it was just like, just randomly happened. It wasn't like at the beginning of a meeting, like maybe you just had connection issues, just like I was connected perfectly fine. And all of a sudden, halfway through the meeting, just poof, couldn't hear anybody. So very annoying. All right, um, we have someone named Tom. Which Tom is this? Are you new? Ah, uh, that's probably me, Thomas Weingartner. Yeah. I'm on a different computer, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I guess. Okay, cool. Uh, someone else went flying by. Oh, the other, oh, Matthew? I'm not sure how to pronounce that, I apologize. <clears throat> Matthew, are you there? Oh, there you go, gotcha, thank you. Does, <laughs> that's an excellent question, Lance. Um, yeah, I ain't convinced they hate their users. Although I have to admit, I, I give them a lot of crap on, on Twitter because I love to pick on WebEx. But the last update they, they did in terms of a, the UI, I do think it was actually an improvement. It's still not where it should be, but it was better than it was. So small victories, I guess. All right, three after. We can switch over to something more exciting than WebEx. Uh, hold on a minute, 16. All right, let's see if I missed anybody. All right, I think I got everybody. All right, let's jump on to this stuff. Um, okay, so Jem did his AI, so there's no AIs left, so that's good. Community time, anything from the community people would like to bring up that's not on the agenda? All right, SDK, I don't believe we had an SDK call last week because we had no agenda items. Um, and this week we are planning on having the discovery interrupt call immediately following this one. Um, Unfortunately, I don't know if we have any topics. That may be quick as well. So be thinking if you have about uh, possible topics for that. And Timur, anything you'd like to mention relative to the uh, workflow subgroup? Um, yeah, thanks. Um, just just overall improvements of the specification. That's what we've been doing for the last uh, couple of weeks. And I'm sorry I missed the last meeting. Um, and we also uh, got a new logo finally. Um, so we're waiting on CNCF design team to actually create us the SVG images so we can post it uh, all over the place. Um, so we're excited about that. And the only other thing I kind of wanted to ask uh, this group is, have you guys heard anything about project office hours for KubeCon NA or no? Um, I did get a note from them asking me to take a survey um, to yeah, ask whether it was useful or not, but I haven't seen an actual like sign up sheet or anything like that yet. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's all I have to. Okay. Any questions for the workflow team from anybody else? All right, moving forward then. Okay, before we jump into the PRs, is there anything on the agenda I, I should have added? Okay, in that case, let's jump into PRs. Okay, so this one is updates to our REST APIs, just filling out some details. Um, been out there, I think I made some minor updates um, late last week or maybe earlier this week, but it was definitely before Tuesday. Um, I did split the APIs into, I think I, what did I call them? I think I call them discovery APIs, which is basically just the get stuff. And then I created management APIs at, per Scott's suggestion, where this does you know, things like imports and puts and stuff like that. So this is the right side of the house. Um, uh, I think for the most part though, that was pretty much most of the changes. Um, I can't remember for sure though, uh, whether async processing section was separate or merged in bef like before, but if not, I did pull out asynchronous processing into its own section this time. But I think I might've had that last time too. Um, but I think that's about it in terms of changes since last week. Now there was a question asked by somebody, it may have been the other grant, asking whether we should look at the log stuff that Eric mentioned last time <clears throat> as a way to handle some of the uh, importing type stuff or epoch processing. And I asked if we can defer that and I didn't hear back from him. So I'm assuming we can deal with his issue later because we don't have the log stuff even really thought about yet. But I think that was the only open question. Uh, so let me go ahead and pause there and see if you guys have any questions, comments. 
thoughts. Nothing? Okay, obviously this is not the final end game. I'm assuming we're gonna make lots of changes going forward. This is just put a stake in the ground for us to have something to work on for the interop stuff. So if there are no comments, any objections then to merging? All right. You know I love silence, thank you. <laughs> All right, next one then, version timestamp. All right, so this one, we decided to go with the ever cool word epoch. And here's the text, let you guys read it in case you haven't had a chance to read it. Okay, any questions, comments, concerns? You guys can't hear me, right? Not pulling a WebEx on me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> nice try, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, I figured if I was actually on mute, somebody would have said something at some point. But of course, if I couldn't hear you, then it wouldn't do any good. So, okay. So, silence means everybody's okay? All right. You guys are killing me. I don't like this rambling off to myself. All right, web, web socket protocol. Now Slinky said he wasn't gonna make it, but he also didn't see any comments made in there. So I guess my job on this one is to nag, I think Clemens, you were the one that had some possible concerns against this. Do you still have those concerns? Um, Cause I think he did make some wording changes. Um, if not, did you wanna eventually add some comments so maybe we can talk about it next week? Um, yeah, that was this, that was the, 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 let me think what it was. Um, ah, yeah, that was this negotiation thing with the different, with the different sub protocols, I think that he had. Yeah. Um, you don't need to, you don't need to review it right now. I just was wondering whether there's something, whether you just, whether you're all, I just was curious whether all your comments were addressed or you just haven't had a chance to review it. I have, I have not, I have been to, unfortunately I've been kind of, backed up okay that's fine i i just don't i just don't want to go and slow things down too much but that's just i'm just not on top of it that's fine i mean slinky's not on the call anyway so we, we I, I was going to defer a vote okay. um but yeah if you can get if you can get those in there um before next week that'd be appreciated okay let me right. let me look at it in parallel okay thank you sir oh does anybody else have anything they want to bring up that i can put in the notes to to ask slinky to think about Okay, in that case, we shall keep moving forward. Um, darn it, I was really hoping Jim would join. He didn't specifically say he wasn't gonna join, but he did ping me saying he thought this one was ready. Um, <clears throat> okay, while well, it's loading. So according to Jim, he does believe this one's ready to go. Um, now, I know nothing about this. I don't know anything about, about protobuf, so I wasn't gonna even say do much with it personally, but for the folks on the call, do people want to vote on this today? We don't necessarily have to wait for Jim, and that, but if you guys think we should, we can. Um, do people want time to review it? Is there anybody on the call who's a protobuf pseudo expert who says, hey, I, you know, I need more time to look it over? What do you guys want to do with this? Because I'm okay voting or waiting, it's up to you. We should get this in and then we should uh, patch it if we need to. Okay, definitely one way to go. Anybody else want to voice an opinion? Okay. Yeah, I'm with that as well. Let's get it in and we can tweak as necessary. Okay. All right. Just to double check and please that people on the call do not feel like you're being pressured. If you want more time, don't hesitate to speak up. For the last chance, anybody want more time to review? Okay. Any objection to approving then? Done. Jim, I'm sure will be thrilled. Thank you, everybody. All right. In that case, Scott said he was going to be late, but I don't see him on yet. So let's see if we can talk about this without him. Um, so on last week's call, he suggested that we try to set up some goals for timelines on things, which 
seemed like people were, you know, generally in favor of that. Has anybody given any thought to what kind of timelines they may have in mind for any of the specifications or even the interop work? Nothing, huh? <laughs> what if we did this? Uh, just put a date out there. What if we shoot for two weeks? No, actually, no, two weeks. Let me, let me do three weeks. What about we shoot for three weeks to hold an interop around discovery? Um. To do an interrupt session on discovery. Interrupt session on discovery, which means we need to completely f f fill out the, all the details of what's expected of each implementation, which means we got to, you know, beef up our documentation or the, the interrupt doc, and then code. Three weeks. So maybe one week to beef up the interrupt doc, and then two weeks to finish up coding. Is that too soon? Yeah. Um, uh... October 15th, so a little less, okay, October 15th, that's, I think, that'd be three weeks or four, that's probably still three weeks then. Yeah. You don't, don't hesitate to say I'm insane, we can push it out, I'm just putting a date out there, because I, I, I like forcing functions, but yeah, I like that might be too aggressive. That's, that's a little, that's a little, that's, a, that's, a, that's very close though. <laughs> sure, reality hits us in the face. Um, well, let's see. We could look at a week later, <clears throat> October 22nd. That makes, that makes it slightly better, but not all right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Clemens, since you're brave enough to come off mute, I'm going to force you. Pick a date. Um, uh, I would say, oh, God, well, end, end of end of october like beginning of uh what is that beginning of november is the second that's kind of where where i think it's more realistic for us like and I, I need i need more buffer because i i can already tell you what we're going to do at each day in the next three weeks mm -hmm. okay what do other people think november 2nd i don't i'm not i know let's see I, I i signed up to do some coding obviously clemens since you're hemming and hawing you're, you're probably gonna do some coding I think Sanjay, you're on the call. You were planning on doing some coding. I can't remember who else pseudo volunteered. Is there anybody on the call who was thinking about doing or who, was particip who wanted to participate? And if so, what do you think about October 2nd? You guys are chicken. <laughs> Sanjay, go ahead. October 2nd to start no, not, 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 I'm sorry, not October, November 2nd. If I said October, I apologize. Oh, no, November. November okay. 2nd. In November 2nd, sorry. Yeah, that is okay. That's okay. I probably misspoke, yes. I was not sleeping, okay. <laughs> You're okay with that? Because I know you you signed up to, to do some stuff, right? Yeah, I would. So you're okay with that date? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's go with that. And oh, go, go ahead, Grant. Yeah, uh, so I was looking at the PR for um, reintroducing the protobuf. Looks like there's, I, I definitely don't want to block on anything, but it looks like there's some like unaddressed comments. For example, um, at the bottom, we, we don't have like comments for uh, all the fields, I and mean, that's pretty knit. But there's one of uh, like the the data fields um, instead of data one of John Skeet uh, recommended just data. So, so I'm imagining like maybe someone should look at the comments before getting all approved. Hmm. Okay. Tell you what. Let me reach out to Jim offline and ask him if he if he thinks he's addressed these or not. Um, and if he thinks he has, maybe I'll reach out to John then. That is John, right? Is his name John? Yeah. Yeah. I'll reach out to John to see if, whether he agrees or not. If, if John disagrees um, and, and wants to block the merge, then I'll, I'll, I'll block it because of that. Um, I mean, hopefully things aren't 
two blocks, but yeah, no, no, it's it's a good point, and, and I apologize. You're right. I, I should have double checked to make sure. Um, hold on. <clears throat> hold on. But yeah, just checking before just pressing the merge button sounds good. Oh, that's that's all good. Okay, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Okay, so back to number second. Double checking. People okay with that? Oh, Scott, you just joined. So the current plan, Scott, is to shoot for November 2nd for interop on discovery. That will be a forcing function to make us clean up or uh, finish up the uh, writing the interop doc and then code for the next couple of weeks. You okay with that, Scott? Okay, sounds great. Were there other dates you wanted to shoot for or was that the main one? Like no, I was, I was just asking for a date, right? Like we could, we could go and polish this forever, but you know, if we kind of set a timeline to stamp it and then iterate, it makes more sense. Yeah, I was just actually, I was more wondering whether there were date, other dates you wanted besides for the interop. For example, were you hoping for a date for the actual discovery spec itself or one of the other specs or is this good enough for now? That works for me. Okay, cool. I am pretty keen on getting the subscription API up and out at some point, but I, I, I think it needs more work than the discovery API. Okay, cool. All right, oh, before I forget, I, Scott, I think you had an action item, and I'm, I need to write this down, to create the discovery metadata for a discovery endpoint. Yeah, I, I do, um, I have that action item. I, I also uh, release captain for Knative right now, so I am- okay, no. <laughs> yeah, I, it wasn't to actually put pressure on you to do it as much as just a reminder because I need to add it to the AI list so that I don't forget to nag you occasionally. So, okay, cool. All right, with that, we are technically at the end of the agenda. Are there any other topics people would like to bring up? Wow. Was that, what, were you saying something there, Clemens? I was just saying, wow, I was, after looking at my watch. <laughs> Well, the short agenda, what do you expect? Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Maybe if possible, while we're here, a question came up while I was reviewing the um, webhook uh, specification. And uh, we do have a 201 created if an event has been accepted and processed uh, from the HTTP semantics. I believe the created could also apply if it has only been accepted and the event has not yet been processed is is that correct or uh created is 201 yeah 202 would be accepted right 202 is accepted yes oh right right so accepted is for the uh not yet been processed yeah uh, we could have 201 for a not yet processed couldn't we uh no because 201 is is says that you have created an object and that will then usually come with a location header, which tells you where you can find that object. There's a there's a there's a there's some implied handshake that happens with the tool one. There's effectively when you take when you um, um, to be nitpicky on the on HTTP, if you're taking an event and you're acting it and you're sending it, you, which means I have understood this and I have processed the event, which means you've you put it on disk, uh, like you have it safe, then you return it to 100. If you take the event, but you haven't done anything with it, but you want to basically return control to the to the HTTP client, mm -hmm. then you send it to or two. Okay, because it's purely about the delivery and acknowledging it, it's just having it stored, not having actually it's, done something. Well, it, okay. is what, it is whatever you think of as processing, right? But 200 yeah. means, the work is done, and 202 means I have taken this message, and and uh, that's all you that's all you say, but you don't make any, any statement about the the having done the work. Okay, thanks. Right. It's it's a it's a small minute detail, of course, um, but it can it can occasionally be useful. Okay. Any other topics people would like to bring up? I have a question. I uh, mm -hmm. Sanjay, I was not there when you guys might have discussed this, but um, so we are trying to use the cloud events 
uh, for uh, both webhook as well as internal events. And one of the questions which came was that, uh, what about the reliable uh, messaging uh, QoS related semantics? So for example, um, if you are trying to retry, how, many, how of, often or how many retries are left, uh, you know, that, that should be stored with the event. Did you guys discuss those kinds of use cases when uh, the cloud event structure was defined? And if you did, then uh, if you can point me to, uh, you know, the discussion, what should be done in that case, that would be great. Because I think the question is, uh, should we have uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, like re reliability uh, context or retry context or whatever, is, should it be part of the event state? which so typically, you know, the event is dispatched. Let's say you are trying to send it to a remote destination. It failed and you want to retry, but you want to put that retry, when to retry, how often, uh, how many retries are left, that uh, data inside the event, where, wherever you are storing the event. So if you are taking it from a queue and sending it out uh, and it failed, uh, you want to, change that state, uh, which is part of the event and put the event back in the uh, queue. Actually. Yeah, let me, let, me try, let me try to address this. Um, Doug, Doug, <laughs> Doug, <laughs> um, just, put, just, put a, just put a little quip into the chat and uh, I actually want to go and pick up on that quip. Yeah, WSRM, yes, I know. I have, yeah, exactly. So I did so, this in uh, EB XML messaging which it actually uh, uh, was used for WSRM. Right. But I so, think it's, so this question came recently, you know, uh, also. So, so let me, let me, let me give you, let me, since, since you're coming from that corner, let me give you, let me give you uh, an answer that is tailored for that corner of the world. I think, I think SOAP made a terrible mistake by trying to, um, do everything from TLS to reliable messaging to uh, uh, you know, message level security and everything completely ignorant of the capabilities of the underlying transports. It basically ended up treating everything like it was a naked TCP socket, but then was happy to kind of bind to fairly sophisticated protocols on top and then layering another layer of brutal complexity on, on top of it. And I think that was also its, uh, its, its downfall was the, the extra complexity. What we've done here, since you were not here as we started this, um, I think one of, the, one of the principles we have here is to not try to, but really make something that is super um, compact and and have something that where you can, where we can agree on what an event is. Well, okay, Clevens, I, I get it. Uh, yeah, no, you know, know, I know I have gone let me through this. Let me let me finish. Let me finish. Let me soap came, I was doing ACTP. Let me finish. Uh, let me finish. Right. I was at BA. We were doing a lot of things like that. Okay. But I, I think I'm the sure. question here is that okay. what is the suggestion so, do you want, do you want for this question? Look, do you want me to answer or don't you? Yes. Okay. So. The principle is that we're going to have that we're going to have a small, compact standard here, which is for, um, f which is just expressing what the event is. Cloud events explicitly scopes out transport concerns, such as redelivery, such as um, you know redelivery count. We don't have that in in the in the message because you are mapping a cloud event onto a transfer message. Um, or containing it in a transfer message. So that's the difference between the binary mode and the structured modes um, of a protocol, which then is suitable for whatever the transfer path is that you have. And if you need to have reliable delivery, we have four, three options for you. We have AMQP, which is a super reliable point-to-point -point transfer protocol, which is an ISO-IC standard. We have MQTT, 
which is also a reliable transfer protocol for PubSub, which is an ISO, ISO IEC standard. And we also have um, uh, Kafka, which also gives you reliable semantics. So you basically have the choice of three protocols which are implemented by a broad variety of popular brokers that you can use cloud events with through the transports binding that we have. And that's how we, that's how we deal with reliability. Yeah, so I was not expecting, uh, you know, the, so I think I'm more asking about how you would advise someone who is asking this question, what to do. Let's say, for example, in, in the context of webhooks, right? If, uh, you know, there is a situation that you want to offer retries, and you are using HTTP. What would be the suggestion that someone asked that, you know, where this information should be stored? Because it, it appears that it should be some other state than the event itself. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, that, yeah, that'd be my recommendation. I, I would take the event and, because if you're going to retry the event, the way I'm looking of, thinking of it is, you're going to store the event someplace so you can retry again later. Well, when you stick that event into something, whether it's a database record or something, right? I would assume you'd probably have other metadata about that record or inside that record. And the cloud event itself is just one of those bits of metadata. Yep. And so that other metadata is where I would stick like the retry count or whatever your other metadata you want to store. But I wouldn't necessarily put it in the event itself because it's not really a metadata about the event. Okay. That's what I was, that's what I was looking for. Okay, great. That, uh, that is not, ex because, you know, uh, Doug, I asked you the question, right, about the extension. Right. And this is one question which I was struggling with that, should I put the extension uh, for the retry there? But now I'm clear that, okay, it should be some, so for example, if you're sending an HTTP message, then with if you're storing that message somewhere to retry at some other uh, time, that state should include the retry specific uh, data, not the event itself, right? Right, yeah. Okay, yeah. I get it. And thanks Clemens, uh, old timers, you know, we know we have looked at the <laughs> whole thing. Old timers. <laughs> oh, I was so actually you... part of uh, this. But, but let me, let me give you- Transaction and coordination. I, I gave my input to it because, you know, one of the protocols I developed was uh, business transaction protocol. Okay. And I know it didn't work because it's very complex. Yeah. So lesson learned. But thank you. Um, I, uh, just, just, just to augment your your knowledge on this, we have this we have uh, Event Grid, which is our uh, you know cloud event based um, uh, eventing platform, and there side delivery metadata. Where we 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 keep where we keep kind of delivery count and the next the back off and and when the next retry is and everything, um, that's kept effectively in a metadata bucket that sits kind of on the side of the event. Okay. So that's that's exactly what how you understood that. So that's how can, we're doing that. In can the you uh, can you put a pointer on the chat or you know I can look something more there. Uh, yeah, I can point you. I'll I'll put a I'll put a pointer to event grid on the chat. I don't think we have a discussion of exactly how we do this, but yeah, you can go look at the product. Okay. Thanks. I'm still bothered by the old timer comment personally. I mean, it's one thing when I make fun of Clemens's age, but now you're including me in that bucket. I don't like that. Oh, <laughs> <sighs> okay. Any other topics, even old timer topics? Yeah, let's talk about. XML RPC for a moment. Yeah, I went talk. I, I missed WS addressing. That was that was anyway. Anyway, okay. Hey, uh, okay. Last chance. Any other topics? Okay. Uh, before we let people go, and whether we may or may not talk about discovery interop, um, let me just do the uh, attendee list. So, Nacho, are you there? Yes. Excellent. And Eric. Hello. Doug. Hello. Ginger? I am, sorry, I was super late. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, Mr. Mark, are you there? I am. Excellent, Good did point. I miss anybody? I just joined, I ho was hoping the call would last for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> now you're, you're lucky it lasted this long. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, let's see. Um, okay, did I miss anybody else? Okay, in that case, before people decide to drop off, do we actually have any topics for the interop discovery part of the discussion? I mean, I guess obviously you can go if you won't care about that stuff, but uh, interop discovery, do we have any topics there? If not, we'll let everybody go. I have nothing. Okay, yeah, I don't have anything either. Although I did, I will admit, I actually started doing some more coding this week, but I only got like half an hour worth, but I at least started, so that's progress, so. Okay. Um, and Sanjay, um, Clemens did paste some links into the Zoom chat. You might want to grab that before you exit. Yeah, I did. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Not hearing anybody with any topics for discovery, we may be done with both calls then. All right. Did okay. The roll call, Doug. I don't see my name here. Oh, I meant to drop you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I did ask if I missed anybody. Okay. Anybody else? All right, we are done. Thank you, everybody, and have a good rest of your day. We'll talk again next week. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 bye.